Okay, we're going to go over iTunes here and its basic features and its layout. Now, I already launched iTunes. If you need to launch iTunes, go ahead and go to your dock and you should have an iTunes icon there by default unless it's been removed. If it has, go to the top of your screen, click on your desktop and select Go from the menu, then Applications and look for iTunes here. When you find it, just double click on it and launch it. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to go back to iTunes by clicking on it and you'll notice that it's kind of separated into a couple areas. You have your left column here, your main window with all of your files in the middle, your top play bar where you have your play, rewind, forward, volume and things like that and a couple other buttons which we'll go over in a bit. In your left column you have your library and this is where all your files are accessible and you can go to see your music your movies TV shows so forth and so on now even though iTunes started as a music program it's evolved into a really multimedia program it has movies TV shows podcasts all sorts of things when you select only your music on the left hand side you'll only see your music on the or list in the main window now all this music can be play it very easily. You just double click on it and it'll start playing. To stop playing it all you need to do is click on this pause button. You can very easily select another one and either double click on it to play it or click on the play button at the top left. Now if I want to play this one that I just selected I actually have to double click on that. That's an it. Very interesting uh, start. So you'll notice that every song has a little checkbox next to it. Now this actually turns the song on and off uh, in the sense that it doesn't delete it, but it makes it unplayable. So let's say that I'm playing this song here. Now if I hit the forward button, it should skip to the next song. But since Cypress Tree here is not selected when I hit next it actually jumps to lay it all on me which is the one right after it. Alright I'm gonna stop that. So by clicking or checking these songs on and off I can control which ones are available for playing. You'll notice that this main window is separated into columns by name, rating, artist, date added, and so forth and so on. And you can actually customize this, these lists or these columns so that you can include things like play count, for example, the amount of times that you've played any particular song. Uh, there's also one for last played, beats per minute. My favorite is rating. And the reason for that is the better you rate your songs or the more you rate your songs, the easier it is to organize your favorites. I'm going to scroll down here. You'll notice some go from one star up here to five stars down here. This goes the same for movies. If I go to see my movies, I can rate my movies and see when they were added and the total length of the movie. In this case, one hour, 46 minutes, and 13 seconds. Below that, or at least below my movies, I can see my TV shows, my podcasts, applications, and even internet radio. Now, in order to use the internet radio, you have to have an internet connection. Sounds pretty uh, obvious, but you'd be surprised. Now, if I go to my radio list and select one, you'll notice that there's a bit rate. Now, the bit rate refers to the quality of this connection or this um, streaming. So, a um, a channel that has 128 kilobits per second is going to have better quality than the one above it here that has only 45 kilobits per second. So keep that in mind when you want to think or when you want li to listen to high quality music or when your internet connection may not be as good as you would like and you need to pick um, a, a shorter or a smaller bit rate. All right, like this one here. Now below my library, I have my Apple iTunes music store. 
Now under the store, I have my actual store. If I click on that, it'll take me to the the home page of the music store. And this also requires an internet connection to be used. Now we're not going to go over this just now, but this is where you would buy your music, your videos, and your TV shows. You also have uh, three playlists below that, or three, I guess you could call them playlists, but here you have a shopping cart for things that you've added to the shopping cart to be purchased. Then you have a playlist that is all the music, videos, and TV shows you've already purchased. Um, and I have two. The reason I, for that is I have the ones that I've purchased here on this computer and the one that I've purchased on my iPhone. Below that you have your devices and your playlist which we'll get to in future videos. Now if I'm looking at any of my music I can see it in list view. Uh, in this area here I can change the view. I'm currently in list view. I can look at it in grid view and I can look at it in cover flow. The difference between these is pretty simple. Coverflow has this really nifty, um, kind of like you're flipping through LPs, the old records, on a, on a shelf. And you can skip through them by using your mouse scroll ball or by clicking on the next album or the previous album. You can also use your mouse by clicking and holding and dragging this little bar left and right. You'll notice as I select an album, for example, the Clash, it'll be the first one listed at the very top here. So if I go here to the Clarks, now the Clarks is listed first. So it's very easy to find the music I like. If I go back to Grid View, there's something really neat about this as well. And that's that you can look at your album by album, just like in uh, or your music by album, just like in Cover Flow mode. But you can also look by artist and by genre. So let's say that you're in the music for Rock Latin then you can just play the rock Latin music or for example here will be another one world music if I double click on that it's only going to show me those albums and the music I have for world music so here's a good one now when I play a song you'll notice that on the very top I have this little equalizer I can scroll through different features of iTunes by hitting on this play little play button here and this will tell me the name of the song name of the album and also how many seconds have gone by and how many or how much time remains if I hit the pause it'll stop and I can go back to all genres to the last window by clicking on in this area here where it says all genres I can also look by composers Now, if you can't see these icons, make sure that the size is to your liking. You can scroll in this area here to make your icons bigger or smaller. Last, there's a little search area at the very top of your screen. And let's go back to list view. And let's say that I want to look up all the music I have from the Beatles. All I need to do is start typing Beatles. And only the music from the Beatles comes up. Keep in mind that if there was a song with the word Beatles in it, it would also show up. For example, let's type in heart. Now I have all sorts of music because we all know heart is probably the most common uh, word in music. So here's all the music with the word heart. All right, so this is the uh, this is your basic layout in in iTunes and uh, we're gonna check on how to make playlists, how to use the devices and how to use the iTunes music store in future videos.